today the Feast of St. Ubaldus. We are here in Coast Falls again. And we'll be seated there. I'm going to read the epistle. The epistle of this Mass. Taken in the book of Ecclesiasticus. Uh, chapters 44 and 45. Behold the great priest, who in his days pleased God and was found just, in the time of wrath was made a reconciliation. There was not any found like unto him who kept the law of the Most High. Therefore, by an oath, the Lord made him increase among his people. He gave him the blessing of all nations and confirmed his covenant upon his head. He acknowledged him in blessings. He preserved for him his mercy, and he found grace before the eyes of the Lord. He glorified him in the sight of kings and gave him a crown of glory. He made an everlasting covenant with him, and he gave him a great priesthood and made him blessed in glory. To execute the office of the priesthood and to have praise in his name, and to offer to him worthy incense for an odor of sweetness. I'm going to say a few considerations from the Father, Son, and the Ghost. Amen. We are, even a fool can see in our times, that we are indeed in a time of crisis. But what is the crisis? There are many ways to look at it. One worry that many souls have today is, how can we survive killing our economy? The Chinese are waging war against the Americans, this coronavirus fake thing that's going on, trying to shut down the economy so that our people are in starvation and the power of America is destroyed. And there's a war, of course, of Satan. The war that's always gone on. Pope Leo XIII mentioned this war in Hamadam Janus in 1884. There is a great movement of organized individuals called the Freemasons. They are the followers of Satan. Now, the Freemasonry was officially only founded in 1717, only 300 years ago. But in fact, that name goes back to 1717. The battle goes back to the Garden of Paradise. And there was a war fought between hell and heaven. And it was a war between two loves between two loves. There is a love of God leading even to the despising of self and this builds a city. And then there is a city of the love of self leading even to the despising of God and this builds a city. The city of the love of self has been constructed. It is every modern city. When you go to any modern city, there are malls. There are places of entertainment. There are conveniences everywhere. And the promise is made to everyone that you can become rich. You can become stable. You can make your own little life of heaven on this earth. And this city is a city of capitalism. For others, it's a city of communism. For others, the city of socialism. But for the most honest souls, it's just a city of selfishness. But it's a city. When everyone gets together in the same city, and what is it that pulls them together in the same city? It is love. I want my life back. I want my money back. I want my freedom back. 
I want my house back. I want my job back. Why? Because I want happiness for me here on this earth, and I want to get my own way. And each one has their own idea of what that is. And he forgets, as Leo the Thirteenth points out when he writes in the Simple Homonym Janus, in the very beginning, modern fools and modern liars, they will tell you there are many cities. 184 nations. That's a lot of nations. 184 nations have decided to shut down their countries because of the coronavirus. 184 countries, 184 kings, 184 presidents, 184 prime ministers, 184 administrators all got together to shut down their countries independently of each other. How independent are they? All that is happening is that the visibility of the one city of Satan is becoming more and more obvious to anyone that has eyes to see. That's all. We see that city very clearly and very plainly. Even the atheists and the Protestants, he knows that there's something wrong. There's something wrong with our world today, and it's bigger than America, and it's bigger than Russia, and it's bigger than China. It's something bigger wrong with the world, and that is that the leaders of the world and the followers of the world, not just the leaders, they of their own free will, including those that call themselves traditional Catholics. You have all kinds of titles to those who belong to the kingdom of Satan. Some are called Satanists. These are the more honest ones. Others are called traditional Catholics. And then there are our conservative Novus Ordo Catholics. And then there are moderate Catholics. Then there are liberal Catholics. And then there are Protestants. There's conservative Protestants. And there's liberal Protestants. Then there's conservative Hindus. And there's liberal Hindus. There are so many different names. There is only one kingdom to which the vast majority of human beings belong to. And it is apparent today, it is the kingdom of the love of self, which is the kingdom of Satan. And the Freemasons are a secret society that simply facilitate the organization of the kingdom to which all most people in the world belong to anyway. All they are is road builders. All they are is organizers. Some of them are called Catholic bishops. Some are called cardinals. Some are called priests. Some are called outstanding faithful. They have so many different titles that they showcase before men. But in fact, they are followers of the love of self. And they belong to a city now this coronavirus so-called crisis, pandemic, panic-demic, whatever you want to call it, it is simply a test, where does my heart stand right now in 2020? Where does my heart stand? The devil is waging war over my heart. God is waging war over my heart. Who has the allegiance? What are my worries? The worries are a sign of what our allegiance is. We're very worried about our economy. These are signs that we belong to the kingdom of Satan. We are very worried about our security. These are signs that we belong to the kingdom of Satan and the city of the love of self. What are we worried about? Even with regard to the Mass, many souls are worried that they can't get to Mass, that they shut down our churches, 
Because I need my Mass. Now let's consider those words. Notice there's a blessed trinity in it. I, my, Mass. I need my Mass for me. There is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Me and myself, and of course, I. The Blessed Trinity. Many souls who follow Satan want Mass. Some souls that follow Satan want the Mass to be wiped out. What does St. Augustine say in Holy the 13th return to all mankind 150 years ago? Two loves built two cities, but what is the love? It is the love of God. What do we call those that love gifts rather than the giver? They're called mercenaries. By our Lord Jesus Christ, they are called hirelings. How many Catholics are mercenaries and how many Catholics are hirelings? We love God because of what we get from God. I get what I feel I need. What about loving God? How many of our ancestors had everything taken from them? The priests had their masses taken from them, had their churches taken from them, had their health taken from them, had their ability to move and taken from them, had their skin taken from them as they were skinned alive, had their head taken from them. But what did they not allow to be taken from them? The love of God in their minds, in their hearts, in their passions, and in their bodies. They will not allow the love of God to be taken away. And therefore, what does the Catholic missionary say when St. Francis Xavier walked without his mass kits into a city in India? What did he say? The kingdom of God has arrived. Our Lord Jesus Christ commanded us to say that as we go to a place, let the people know the kingdom of God has arrived. It's a kingdom built on the love of God. The trouble is the devil builds his kingdom on the love of self, and this love has many requirements. It requires money, it requires food, Requires all kinds of external things, requires approvals by the world, requires that they got taking care of the flesh, requires obeying the devil. There are many requirements of this love of self. And the love of self is all over the world today. And the love of self is destroying the kingdom of God. It is absolutely destroying it. What is needed? What is needed is a priest. What did, what did Our Lady of Fatima say? What's going to solve the problem of our present crisis? When the Pope, the Holy Father, the Bishop of Rome, the High Priest, unites with other High Priests throughout the world, the other bishops, and consecrates Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This tells us that the war is one of hearts. We must consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Of course we must stamp out all heresy and all lies. But the trouble is, the devil has captured the vast majority of our hearts. And what is it that the man who has the love of God seeks after? The salvation of souls. Remember when our Lord Jesus Christ, the high priest, came down to this earth. It was filled with sin. It was filled with lies. His own priest, the true priest of the Old Testament that was about to end that priesthood, but it was a true priesthood. Those priests of the Old Testament had turned against him. 
Those priests of the Old Testament had become perfectly selfishness. Selfish. Those priests of the Old Testament offered the true sacrifice of the Old Testament, but they offered that sacrifice for their own self-aggrandizement, for their own benefit, and they did not offer it for God. Also heresy entered into many of them. And they hated Jesus Christ when he came. They hated him. And why did they hate him? Because he was affecting their popularity. And the priests had envy and jealousy. And the priests therefore tried to destroy Jesus Christ, the true priests, because of their own desire to survive and their own desire to make their own little kingdom here upon the earth. That's why our Lord allows throughout every age in history for there to be trials. We are having our little trials now. The persecution of the Catholic Church has now begun. It will not end right away. It's going to get worse. As in the days of the first 300 years of our church, there was a great persecution, and then there was a brief uh, respite, rest from the persecution, then another persecution. Through ten great persecutions in those first 300 years, they were not persecuted every minute of those 300 years, but they were persecuted throughout the whole time. We are now entering into such an age again. And why does our Lord allow, our Lord allow this to happen? In order to build his kingdom and to make soldiers. Our soldiers are only formed in trials. Our love is only increased in trials. Whereas the devil increases the love of him by giving you softness. And by giving you comforts and giving you a rewards that you can grab onto right now. And telling you that if you follow his, his wicked ways, you are going to have 40 years of good times. That's the promise that he made to Elizabeth, the queen, before she had 40 years of reign. And ended her life in despair and burns now in hell. And many such promises he made to rock and roll singers in our times. And many such promises he made, so Satan made to political leaders. And those that are doing well in, the, in, in helping destroy our society, they're being promised money, they're being promised pleasure, they're being promised economic prosperity. What are we promised if we decide to love God? If we decide to love God, we are promised an eternal prosperity in heaven and a much greater reward in heaven and a hundredfold of happiness here below, greater than our enemies ever can experience. But we will have trials and tribulations and tests. For blessed is the just man who could have sinned but did not. And we're going to have opportunities of wrath. And that's the point of reading the epistle today. Behold the great priest, Sacerdos Magnus, who in his days pleased God, says the book of Ecclesiasticus, and he was found just, and in the time of wrath was made a reconciliation. There was not any found like to him who kept the law of the Most High. What was he made? A reconciliation. What do we do in war? What do we do in war? We are now in war. They pull out their machine guns. They pull out their stupid laws. They pull out their police. They pull out their spies. Snitches get riches. So they pull out all of their weapons. What do we pull out? Reconciliatio. Reconciliation. What does that word mean? It means we are going into a world of those who are enemies of God. Those that are living in the state of mortal sin. Those that are heretics. 
Those who are, even if they are not heretics, are not the friends of God and have no strength in their bowels, and they are far from Him, like St. Peter was before he said, I do not know the man. All he did was express what was already in his heart. Before he said those words the first time, he was already watching Christ from a great distance. He was already afraid to be seen as the friend of Christ. He was already trying to disguise himself so he did not appear to be the disciple of Christ. And then he was recognized at the fire, and then one said to him, Are you not one of his followers? And then what was already in his heart came out. I don't know the man. We are now in a time in which the majority of souls who say they follow Christ need reconciliation. They'll have to fall three times like St. Peter did, perhaps. But they are not now the friends of God. What do we normally do with someone like Peter? Or what about Judas? Our Lord Jesus Christ, imagine those eleven apostles. That great instruction that they received, terrified in the garden, exhausted on Holy Thursday night, Seeing a mob coming to capture their master, whom they love with all their hearts. Seeing him drip with blood from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. And there is Judas, the missing apostle. He'd been gone for such a long time. Now he's back. And he's the one that showed that mob where that place was in the garden. Because only those twelve men knew where Christ was his nights. And one of them brought that great mob to capture him. And our Lord Jesus Christ gave a final instruction to his apostles. Friend, this is the word that he said to that traitor. Friend, What is it that must be in our hearts in the time of war if we are going to be as the Sacerdos Manus? Great priest. What does great priest mean? Does it mean he's got a pointy hat and he's called a bishop? Does it mean he's got a tiara and has three rings of authority on top of his head like a pope? Does it mean he's got a beretta and wear a hat in church you guys can't? Maybe it means something more than a hat. Greatness is found in the heart. There is where greatness is. Ecce sacerdos magnus. Behold the great priest. And how do we know the greatness of heart? Only when the bullets are flying. Only when there is bloodshed, only when the enemy has surrounded us, and we are without weapons, and we are alone in the battle, that is when we see what kind of heart that we have. And he teaches those apostles. Abiche, friend. Imagine what was in the heart of those eleven apostles. Each of them would die by the hands of those who wanted their faith to die. Not one of them, or St. John, remember, did not actually physically die a martyr, but he is considered a martyr because he was boiled in oil and miraculously preserved. But each of those eleven, and the twelfth one that took the place of Judas, Matthias, Every one of them looked upon those that skinned Bartholomew, looked upon the man that skinned him alive with a knife. Bartholomew's skin was removed from him by a dull knife. He was skinned alive over a very long period of time. 
It was a long martyrdom, was Bartholomew's. And what did he say? Friend. And what is it that was in the heart of the other apostles when they died? Friend. And in a few hours, what will they hear our Lord Jesus Christ say in the midst of the great battle when he is nailed to the cross? Now in the battle, he spoke to the great betrayer. He spoke to the great traitor. Right now, who is the greatest traitor on earth? His name is Francis Bergoglio. He is the greatest traitor on earth today. And he is a descendant of Judas Iscariot who sits in the chair of Simon Peter. And he's also being quite faithful to Simon Peter because he is saying to the whole world, I do not know the man. Times haven't changed that much. Times haven't changed very much at all. Here he is, the vicar of Christ. He says, I do not know the man. When he is God, He's the creator. How can you say he's only a man? Not only that, you don't even know him. The scandal reaches to the very ends of the earth. So that even a girl who is not a Jew, even a girl who is not a Catholic, even a girl that has who's, who, is a wicked girl in the middle of the night, says, your own, your own speech betrays you. You have an accent like all of his followers. You're telling me you don't know the man? And in order to convince her that he didn't know the man, he cursed and he swore. And so today, Pope curses and swears he doesn't know the man. Why are we scandalized? What is needed? Sacerdos manus. What happened in Vatican II? Several thousand bishops turned their hearts away from God. And the 60s was a wild year, generation. Why? Because of bishops, because of priests, because of Judas Iscariot who led the mob into the Holy Church in the night of this world, and betrayed Christ with Vatican II. And then he's scourged, and he's led off to trials, and he's condemned, and he's condemned, and he's condemned, and he's condemned. condemned. Ever since the time the priest said, he gave a kiss to our Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, does thou betray the Son of Man with a kiss? There's trouble in the world because the priest doesn't love God. And what is the solution to the trouble in the world? The priest must love God. We are in a battle of loves. It's a very tough battle. It's a very great battle, the battle of loves. There's no rules in it. There's lots of troubles. But we are in a real battle of loves. We must pray to the Lord of the harvest that he send us another Archbishop of F. That he send us another St. Bernard of Clairvaux. There must be another St. Gregory the Great and St. Gregory the Seventh. St. Hildebrand. There must be another Giuseppe Sarko, the parish priest, to save the church in the early 20th century because of his love. St. Pius X. What is in our heart in the time of battle? What is in our heart in the time of trouble? The Holy Ghost says, Ecce sacerdos magnus. 
Sacheros Manus. For in the time of wrath, in the time of anger, in the time of violence, he is looking for a reconciliation. Now, did he succeed? He did call Judas a friend, that great high priest who is our father, who is my master, and the servant is not greater than his master. He failed. He did not get Judas. He called him friend. He gave him every opportunity to repent. But what happened? Judas hung himself with a halter taken from a donkey. He was supposed to be a donkey himself. He was supposed to be a donkey that carried Christ in Jerusalem and carried Christ to the ends of the earth. And he took the very halter from the donkey of his own priesthood and he hung himself by his own priesthood with the blessed sacrament freshly received upon his tongue by that first sacrilegious holy communion. Having been at the very first true holy sacrifice of the Mass, Judas was at the Latin Mass. Judas was at the true Mass. Judas received Holy Communion not from Altar Christus, another Christ. He received Holy Communion from Christ Himself. He didn't see a vision of Christ. He saw Jesus Christ in His real flesh, in His real humanity. And He heard the words spoken through that human body of Jesus Christ of infinite divine love. And he did not repent. What happened to later on? Did our Lord Jesus Christ, the high priest, become discouraged? He did not. Caiaphas, the priest of the Old Testament, who should have been converted, and should have become a priest in the New Testament, he also did not repent. But a thief repented and became a saint that day. A coward retrenched and became brave that day, Nicodemus. A man who was too attached to money, very hard to save his soul, gave a brand new tomb for Jesus Christ to be buried in, went boldly with Nicodemus before Pilate and demanded the body and became a saint and bishop of our church. Rich man became a hero that day, St. Joseph of Arimathea. And a regular man trying to collect his eggs, a fool, got to carry the cross behind our Lord. And that high priest that failed so terribly and denied Christ three times. He wept bitterly, and he turned to the Holy Mother of God. And though he failed so terribly, he would never fail again, that he might make minor mistakes. And Simon became truly Saint Peter. And when they were crucifying him, what was his thought? I am not worthy to die like my master, and therefore desired to be crucified upside down. What was his thought when he was about to be crucified? What was Andrew's thought when he was about to be crucified? What is in our hearts when the battle comes? Sacheros Magnus. What must be in the heart of the Sacheros Magnus? It must be reconciliation and not wrath. There are times of wrath. There are times. Where sometimes the bishop will pull out his staff called the crozier. He will take his mitre, which has two horns on it, and he will do great damage to the enemies of God in order to protect the sheep whom he loves. Because they're his own sheep. We must consider 
We're in a great battle. But it is the battle of love. Which love is inside of my heart? Let us beg the grace that it truly be the love of God and not any other kind of love that is really inside of our hearts. And we're afraid of discomfort. We're afraid of losing what we have. We are weak creatures. But which fear is more in us? Am I more afraid of losing the externals of the faith, such as the Mass, the externals of the world, such as my job? Or am I more afraid of losing my faith, more afraid of losing the love of God? And remember our ancestors, they stood so strong against adversity and their hearts conquered the wickedness of the world in which they lived. Because the Divine Father, the Divine Son, and the Divine Holy Ghost, and the spouse of the Holy Ghost, dwelt inside of them. And the love of the faith was in them, and that love made them conquer all. And this is what must be in us in our great fight. And remember, don't turn to wrath. This is the great temptation. When a man who has not wrath in his heart becomes angry, you'd better not be there. For the wrath is like unto the wrath of God. When a man is selfish and he has wrath in his heart because he's been discomforted, he is like unto Satan. This wrath is not to be feared. This wrath is useless. But remember the wrath that comes forth from God. It's not likely to the wrath of the world. He did not become angry with Caiaphas, or rather Pilate, even though he told him he was wrong on Good Friday. He did become angry with Caiaphas. That was an exception. He became angry with Simon Peter earlier when he said, get behind me, Satan. But his ways are not our ways. And let us ask that his ways enter into us. And he, he is going to have his victory when the heart of the high priest, who now hates God, named Pope Francis, and the heart of the other priests, who are afraid of God or who hate Him and care only about themselves to varying degrees, are repentant. And when they actually finally obey heaven, and when the heart of the faithful turned back to God, it was a girl that couldn't read that changed the history of the church. A girl that was the 24th or 25th child of a family, never went to school, that saved the church. 700 years ago, 600 years ago, St. Catherine of Siena. Don't say that I'm not a priest, therefore it's not, I've not my problem. She wasn't a priest, she didn't even go to school. But she stood in the presence of God, and she corrected the Pope, and she saved the church. And Joan the Maid saved France, and she couldn't read either. She could listen to God. She could listen to St. Michael. And so it is. It is, the, it is the heart that loves God with true faith that will conquer Satan. And so we must ask the grace of God that the heart that loves Him be found inside of us. And that we bring this heart to battle. And that in the time of wrath, that our hearts be rather upon reconciliation, as the Sacheros Magnus, the great high priest, as the book of Ecclesiasticus tells us, and then there shall be a great victory. And don't worry, those that do not repent, they are going to burn. And they will burn forever. And they shall not escape the wrath of God. 
And our Lord also gave a trick for those that have hot tempers and don't really want to get over it. St. Jerome is one of those. He says, if you really hate your enemy and you really want him to be burned, then be charitable to him. Be good to him. Because when he does not respond to that, he's going to burn more. Because God will have his vengeance. And so charity is the best way to get vengeance. And charity is the best way to bring about a reconciliation, to conquer our enemies. And then whenever the time comes to have an external expression of wrath, we will know what to do and be motivated by God and not by foolish selfishness. And let us do our part to be members of the army of Christ and builders of His kingdom in this great fight. Including of us, you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.